we couldn't stop there. We'd have to say selected item dot value. Index. Selected index. Selected index we could do too, but the code might be a little cryptic. It would be. All right, because zero is euros. What if someone repositions it? Or if you're debugging it, what was zero again? And all that. So you could do index. Um, six of one half does the other, yeah. Okay, if that equals euro, then thanks. sure I got the right values for this. Euro pounds. Euro pounds. All right. So let's go and let this one rip. And let's see if it works. Oops. Use of unassigned local variable converted amount. Huh? What's wrong with that? What what does that error mean? It means that somewhere you didn't declare it as a value or variable, but you did, so it's pretty probably spelled it wrong somehow. Well, this is again my whole thought of doing a little bit at a time, right? Because it worked a minute ago when I was just doing pounds. I didn't touch that line of code. All right, so probably isn't that I spelled it wrong. Notice it says use of unassigned local variable. What do you suppose that means? Initialize the if, if value statement. Repeat that, please. Initialize the double converted amount to that statement. It, above the if is value statement. Exactly. In other words, it is possible for this to execute and not give a value to converted amount, right? Because we have two if statements here. If this is true, then we're going to set the converted amount to this. If this is true, we're going to set the converted amount to that. But what if neither of them are true? Then converted amount doesn't get a value. And the compiler knows that that's a problem, all right? Now, here's the interesting thing. We've rigged the deck, right? We know that the only two possibilities are euro and pound. So we know that it can't get through those if statements without assigning a value, but the compiler doesn't know. And what's more, if someone went and uh, changed the UI and, and, and added a third thing or whatever, then it would be possible to get through those if statements and all of them be false and therefore it wouldn't get a value. So what we want to do in this case is we want to assign a value. Now, I'm going to say something that, who knows, maybe he would agree with me, maybe he'd burst in the door and start arguing with me if he was on campus. Probably not, because he's pretty quiet. But this is something that Mr. Norad might disagree with me on. But notice how I didn't do else's. All right, I could just as well have done else's, all right? But you know what? In the grand scheme of things, doing one gigantic if statement or five, ten little if statements really isn't going to make that much of a difference, right, as far as executing code. And it's going to make it cleaner to read, all right? So in the name of readability, I'm going to sacrifice the teensiest bit of efficiency. And... I'll go to my grade thinking that's a good idea. I've, I, seriously, I've seen so many people try to write the tersest, most tight code that is incomprehensible and that is prone to bugs and is really difficult when it comes at a, at a later time to go and change it. Now, 
depending on the kind of code you're writing, sometimes that's necessary. You're writing device drivers, or you're writing, you know, some assembly language, language code or something like that. Yeah, you know, squeeze out as many, you know, bytes and microseconds as you can. Or if it was 1972, all right, or whatever. But these days, I think that the, 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 for, for the benefit that you get of readability, the tiniest loss of efficiency really doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go and run this. That eliminated that error. And I can go and say one of these, one euro is 0.75, which is correct. One of these is pounds, which is correct. What did you change? What do you mean, what did I change? What did you change? How did you? How did I get rid of the error? I just initialized this converted amount to oh, zero. There you go. Yeah. Because the problem was is that it could have made it through those if statements and not have a value. Right. So I gave it a value. Yes? I'm curious, uh, what makes that more readable? Like, couldn't they all be separate if statements that don't have go with each other? But if you nest them or put like if else, you would know that it's all one part of one if statement. I'm just curious. Why I say that? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm saying it's, it's more readable for me. Okay. All right? Um, which, again, you know, another thing that would be uh, readable would be a case statement. All right, that would make it more readable as well. I guess what I'm saying is when I start nesting, if I start indenting, if there's enough of them, we're going to be indenting 50 columns, you know, and it's going to be hard to read. So it's subjective. This is just my viewpoint on it. And I would say that, that you know, in my mind, that would be easier to read than this. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you not even need the if though? If it's an else. In this particular case, I wouldn't need the if because they're the only two alternatives are are euros and pounds. But if I were to add, say, francs or, or yen or whatever, then I wouldn't need that. Wouldn't you put the else if all under one line though? Put else if. You can, but again, is you're not really that better off. Right, so you get you get rid of a curly bracket, maybe. All right, so you get rid of these. Yeah. So, again, largely personal preference. That was that was my view on it. I think the big difference of using else is that else statement will only run if your first if statement. Right, that's, that's what I'm saying. There is a teensiest bit of extra efficiency if you bake this into one giant if statement. But if it's less readable, then is it worth it? It was, was my statement. All right, so now we want to have the ability to convert between any two of the currencies. So in, in all these currencies, the assumption was that um, the assumption was that the input uh, field was it was in uh, dollars, all right, and that we would convert dollars into something. Now we want to choose what we enter in, and we want to choose what the output is. So we want to be able to convert dollars to euros, pounds to dollars, pounds to euros, any combination of that. All right, so I'm going to code this the way most of the people coded it that, that got to this part. All right, and then we're going to talk about, I won't say what's wrong with that, because there's nothing wrong with that approach, so much as what could be better about it. Maybe that's a better way to, to, to put it. All right, so let's go in here. We're going to need another drop down. And again, I recognize the fact that there should be some labels here, but I'm going to put, I'm going to add dollars to this list. And I'm going to copy it and make a second one. Let's 
And just to clarify things, I'm going to change the names of these. To DD from and DD to. Since you copied and pasted them, do they all have the same um, things? In the all have the same values? Yeah. Rearranging things to try to make it look a little nicer. there. It even renamed my code yeah, that, because I did yeah. that. I wasn't sure it would do that. Right. Although that actually, well, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> we're we're going to have to change this anyway. Right, right. So, all right, what do we do now? All right. Hmm. Well, 
be the reciprocal of 1 uh, of 0.63, which is 1 over 0.63, which is, which is, One point five eight seven three. All right, excellent. Now euros to euros, we know, right? That's still one. A euro is a euro. A pound is a pound. Now the only thing we have to do is figure out the conversion between euros and pounds. Let's see. One dollar is point seven five euros. One dollar is also 0.63 pounds. So, by substitution, 0.75 euros equals 0.63 pounds. So, 1 euro is 0.63 over 0.75 pounds. So, to go from euros so that would be 0.63 over 0.75, or 0.84. Other way should be the reciprocal, so 0.75 over 0.63, which is what? If the two amount is also dollars, then it's one, right? Because if we're converting from dollars to dollars, the answer is it's the same amount. Twenty dollars is twenty dollars. All right. If the converted amount is dollars and we're converting two pounds, then it's 0.63. If the converted amount is pounds, I'm sorry, is dollars, and we're converting to euros, then it's 0.75. Now, I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to test this, right? It will just show zero for any other conversion that doesn't start with dollars. But that's okay. Effectively, because I know I'm not done, right? It's not okay to say I'm done and turn it in like this, right? But for now, it's okay. I, I recognize that. I'm going to test this little piece of it. If you think about it, this is what this program did a minute ago, right? When I only had the one drop down. It took dollars and converted it to something else. So, hey, we'll try that. We'll see if it works to see if our, our, our thought process is correct here. So I'll go, and I'll go and do this, and I'll say one dollar, what did I do to my button? A 
bet you my cut and paste and I deleted the button. So let's go and add it back in. equal sign. I was just graphically trying to make a, an equal sign. Oh, okay. Just just to show that this currency equals that currency. I'll put it. I'll put the equal sign on a button. Just for laughs. All right. So one dollar equals. Associate that on on that button when I deleted my button and re-added it, it doesn't know that that's the on click event anymore. So therefore, that code never fires. How could I know that for sure? I could know that for sure by going in here and saying a breakpoint. All right, and then I could run this in debug. <coughs> And I could put in a number and click there. It's not hitting that breakpoint. So that code isn't being executed. Well, what could keep a button code from being executed? Well, if the button doesn't realize that it's supposed to call that code, it's not going to. So I need to add in on click equals button submit click. Here's where I would say it's important to know the code as well as knowing the GUI, right? If all you knew was Visual Studio and you were doing everything here, you would never see that problem. You would be mystified. You need to be able to look at the code and at least somewhat be able to decipher it and, and, and follow, follow what it's doing. So the, re the way I was able to see that is I was able to look at the code and say, hey, there's no button click event on it. So that code isn't firing off. All right. There was a, an article written, I don't know, a bunch of years ago, but it's still true. You should Google it and, and try to read it. And the name of the article was, Does Visual Studio Make You Stupid? All right. <laughs> and the argument was, and this argument that, that I've, I've seen, and, and I, there, there's definitely believability there, that... By relying on the IDE, that is by relying on Visual Studio, you don't really learn the programming language. You learn your way of navigating the IDE, and oh yeah, a little bit of programming in there too. So let's not let's avoid that trap. If we know that that's, there's a potential for that, let's make sure we spend some time looking at the code so that we can understand exactly what's going on. All right. Again, by just knowing the GUI, you can work your way through many times, you know, many situations. But when something doesn't work exactly the way it, you would expect it to, it's nice to have that skill set of being able to crack it open a hood and look it underneath and seeing exactly what's wrong. So let's try this guy now. So I could say one dollar equals one dollar. That's good. One dollar equals how many euros? Zero. One dollar equals how many pounds? Zero. Oh, no, I'm changing the wrong one. One dollar equals how many euros? All right, still having a problem. How many pounds? 0.63. So euros isn't working. Why? Probably because I put euro in the drop down and tested for euros. Sure enough. And now we should have that working. Pardon me? I said it'll just let you put whatever you want oh, yeah. in those codes. Right. You've got to be careful. There you go. Okay. What I'm 
doing right there is called regression testing. That is, I not only tested the thing that didn't work before, I went back and made sure I didn't break anything that did work before. All right. Now, in the case of this, it's pretty clear, I mean, by changing euros to euro, that I'm not going to break the pounds and dollar conversion. It's obvious. Huh? It's obvious. You know, if I had a nickel for every time someone told me, I only changed this one line of code, and all of a sudden it stopped working, I would have a, an awful lot of nickels. All right? Because... A lot of times you don't see how things are connected, and, and a change made in one place doesn't look like it should affect something else, but oftentimes it does. So as such, you know, it's important when you test something to go back and test and say, hey, I fixed problem A, is the cure worse than the disease? Did I break three other things? So that's regression testing. All right, so now the scheme works. All I really have to do now is make a version for, or copy this code for euros and pounds and substitute the appropriate amounts. So if the from equals euro, to get dollars, I do what? I, I divide by 0.75, right? I multiply by 1 over 0.75, which is the same as dividing by 0.75. To get pounds, I multiply by what I have up there, 0.63 over 0.75. Yeah, 0 0.84 or 0 0.63 over 0 0.75. Or I could put 0 0.84, but I'm deliberately putting this in this way. And then finally, if I'm, if I'm euros and I'm converting to euros, then it's simply that amount. I guess I don't say need to say one times amount. But I'll do that anyhow. One times amount. Again, for demonstration purposes. Lastly, I'll go in and I'll copy this and I'll do pounds that would be divided by 0 0.63 this would be 1 and this would be 0.75 divided by 0.63 times amount. All right. So now let's test this out. Two dollars equals how many dollars? Two. Two euros equals how many dollars? 2.6667. Is that correct? Two dollars, or two pounds equals how many dollars? Is that correct? These numbers look correct to me. Try some things, right? I could put this in. This says two dollars equals that many pounds. 